What is up guys, my name is Paul and welcome back to the channel where today I'm gonna show you how you can make a DIY sequential shifter. Let's get stuck in. In today's video guys, I'm just gonna show you how I have built a DIY shifter and um, you don't have to stick directly to what I've done as I have used a whole bunch of components around the house, um, but the idea is the same of how you could use it to construct something for yourself. Just with a few electrical bits, an Arduino, and some random mechanical hardware around the house, it is possible. So the idea is simple, guys. We need some kind of shaft that can pivot on a pivot point when being pulled back to hit the button and being pushed forward to hit button two, shift up, shift down, as simple as that, in some kind of enclosure. I was fortunate enough to have a old PC hard drive bay available to me, which I decided to use as my enclosure for the whole design. You will then need to cut some kind of shaft to the desired length. I had a piece of plastic from some packaged material that I measured out, uh, cut to length and then drilled a hole through and then through the enclosure for the pivot point. Simply putting the whole thing together using a M10 or M12 bolt and nut, we can see the concept coming together here as this can now pivot along this pole. I then simply hot glued an existing gear knob to the top of the shaft uh, to give it the most realistic feel as a sequential shifter. Here we can see the idea coming to life. Now using some springs from an RC car, I would use these to get the sequential to fire back to center. Pushing forward, firing back, pulling back, firing forward. Mounting the shaft into the enclosure, I discovered that I required a bunch of washers to get it centered, but also for a smooth, secure travel. And here we can see me positioning the RC springs to do a push-pull effect. Unfortunately, the RC springs, although did work, were not strong enough for a stiff bounce back. We can see it clearly working here, but it did feel a little bit loose to me. Luckily on hand, I had a couple of these silver springs from garden shears to stiffen up the motion. Here we can see a much stronger click and fight back. This is what we require in a sequential. I will say that it is not necessary to use these silver springs. I believe if you can simply get your hands on some proper hobby grade RC springs and dampers with the correct oil inside of them, they should be strong enough and do the job correctly. Time to program your little Arduino. The first piece of software we're gonna need is SimHub and the beauty is you do not need to know anything about Arduino. Simply download SimHub and connect your Arduino to your computer. Once connected, go over under the Arduino section under single Arduino and open up the Arduino setup tool. This is the first time I've opened it myself and a pop-up will appear where we need to point it or tell it what board you specifically have bought. Doesn't matter really what board you've bought, go ahead and select your type of board from the dropdown. From here, let's go ahead and give it a name. I'm gonna go ahead and call it Sequential Shifter. Now, let's go ahead and select the correct communication port and whatever appears there under some kind of Arduino name will be the correct port. From here, we're gonna scroll down and go all the way down to additional buttons. We're going to be adding two new buttons, a button up and a button down. Now, it doesn't matter what ports you select, as long as they match the soldering we're going to do in the future, I'm going to select pin four and pin eight, all going to ground. 
From here, we can simply tick to upload to the board so that we understand and let the process begin. It may ask you to link game controller functionality. Let's say yes. From here, let the process upload to the board and you should see your Arduino start to flash. We know now that it is uploading to the board and let this process complete. Once complete, Windows will have a little pop-up in the bottom right corner saying that the device has been set up as Arduino Micro or whatever board you purchased. A further test is to under Windows search type enjoy.cpl which will take you into the control panel and we can clearly see here that the Arduino has been detected. Here is the wiring diagram between your limit switches and the Arduino board. Please ensure to solder the positives of your limit switches to the correct pins you selected in the software. Example on mine, gear up will be pin 4 and gear down will be pin 8, followed by your ground. Once you've completed all your soldering, let's go ahead and hook it up back to the computer and let's open up that joy.cpl software again. As soon as I click on button one, we can see it lighting up as my shift up. Button two, clicking here, we can see it lighting up under. Button two for my shift down. I then went ahead and put it into a little enclosure just to keep it safe from the mechanism within the shifter. From here, I needed to mount the two limit switch buttons onto some kind of structure where I could then go position them at the right angle uh, to make contact with the shifter when shifting up or down. Here we can see it mounted on the one side. And I'll go ahead and do the same on the other side. I then went ahead and test mounted it to my rig. I did not show this process guys as everybody's rig will be different and mine is clearly unique. Here's a little piece of rubber that I cut out of a mouse pad just to kind of give it a finished look and to hide some of those ugly mechanics on the inside. Time to test it out. So here we are in WRC guys, which is the main reason I actually wanted to do this. Let's go ahead and navigate over under controls. It will auto detect and it'll ask you to calibrate it. Let's go ahead and change it to a shifter and confirm. From here, we're gonna navigate down in the buttons to sequential up and sequential down. Go ahead and click bind and pull or push the lever whichever direction you require. Doing the same on button two for sequential down. From here, we're going to jump over under Assist and change our transmission to Manual Sequential. Also, change your clutch control down to Automatic. This will give you the most realistic sequential feeling we can get out of the game. Everything should be working correctly now.
the same applies under set of course and content manager guys navigate under settings controls and let's go over to buttons under shifters next gear we're going to click on it under the arduino micro pull on the lever and button two push on the lever and that is it please note that also once you're ready to drive under your pro settings or tire blanket settings there's a section for automatic clutch you want to activate automatic clutch for a true sequential experience So my final thoughts guys, is it worth it? I think so, I love it. Obviously there is room for improvement to make it stronger, more stable, but the concept works. As you can see, I'm shifting gears sequentially up, down in the games, the Seto Corsa WRC, um, you're simply mapping it as a button forward, button back. Uh, I'm very happy with it. Look, there are cheaper sequentials out there, but I think the journey and the fun is in the fact that it's DIY and I made this myself. Uh, there are ideas out there that already exist. I use these ideas to create mine. Uh, it's been a fun project and I've saved a lot of costs. This has cost me almost nothing just by doing this with components around the house. You can get crafty, maybe use 3D printed parts for a more permanent or solid setup compared to mine, but it works. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. And I'll check you on the next one where we create something new for the sim. Cheers, guys.